If Piper concentrated, she could see her normal arms, but when she moved them they rippled like mirages, separating into three different sets of muscular earthborn arms. Percy grimaced, which looked even worse on his newly uglified face. Wow, Annabeth, I'm really glad I kissed you before you changed. Thanks a lot, she said. We should get going. I'll move clockwise around the perimeter. Piper, you move counterclockwise. Percy, you scout down the middle. Wait, Percy said. We're walking into the middle of the whole blood-spilling sacrifice trap that we've been warned about, and you want to be split up even more? We'll cover more ground that way, Annabeth said. We have to hurry. That chanting? Piper hadn't noticed it until then, but now she heard it. An ominous drone in the distance, like a hundred forklifts idling. She looked at the ground and noticed bits of gravel trembling, skittering southeast, as if pulled towards the Parthenon. Right, Piper said. We'll meet up at the giant's throne. At first it was easy. Monsters were everywhere. Hundreds of ogres, earthborn, and cyclops milling through the ruins. But most of them were gathered at the Parthenon, watching the ceremony in progress. Piper strolled along the cliffs of the Acropolis unchallenged. Near the first Anagor, three Earthborn were sunning themselves on the rocks. Piper walked right up to them and smiled, Hello! Before they could make a sound, she cut them down with her sword. All three melted in the slag heaps. She slashed the Anagor's spring cord to disable the weapon, then kept moving. She was committed now. She had to do as much damage as possible before the sabotage was discovered. They skirted a patrol of Cyclops. The second Anagor was surrounded by an encampment of tattooed Lastagonian ogres, but Piper managed to get to the machine without raising suspicion. She dropped a vial of Greek fire in the sling. With luck, as soon as they tried to load the catapult, it would explode in their faces. She kept moving. Griffins roosted in the colonnade of an old temple. A group of Impusia retreated into a shadowy arcway and appeared to be slumbering, their fiery hair flickering dimly, their brass legs glinting. Hopefully the sunlight would make them sluggish if they had to fight. Whenever she could, Piper slew isolated monsters. She walked past larger groups. Meanwhile, the crowd at the Parthenon grew larger. The chanting got louder. Piper couldn't see what was happening inside the ruins. Just the heads of twenty or thirty giants standing in a circle, mumbling and swaying, maybe doing the evil monster version of the Kumbaya. She disabled a third siege weapon by sawing through the torsion ropes, which should give the Argo II a clear approach from the north. She hoped Frank was watching her progress. She wondered how long it would take for the ship to arrive. Suddenly the chanting stopped. A BOOM echoed across the hillside. In the Parthenon, the giants roared in triumph. All around Piper, monsters surged towards the sound of the celebration. This could not be good. Piper blended into the crowd of sour-smelling earthborn. She bounded up the main steps of the temple, then climbed a section of the metal scaffolding so she could see above the heads of the ogres and cyclops. The scene in the ruins almost made her cry aloud. Before Polyphreon's throne, dozens of giants stood in a loose ring, hollering and shaking their weapons as two of their number paraded around the circle, showing off their prizes. The princess Periobia held Annabeth by her neck like a feral cat. The giant Enclidius had Percy wrapped in his massive fist. Percy and Annabeth both struggled helplessly. Their captors displayed them to the cheering horde of monsters, then turned to face King Polyphreon, who sat in his makeshift throne, his white eyes gleaming with malice. Right on time, the giant king bellowed. The blood of Olympus to raise the Earth Mother!